if you think you don't know God, then you think the knowing mind is the cogitating mind, the intellect. Don't try to know God with this mind. That's not knowledge. That's thinking. Maybe my reluctance to let go and let God, in quotes, as the saying goes, has to do with the fact that I don't really know God. Can you speak to that? Well, you absolutely know that the only part of you that doesn't know God is the ego, because the rest of you is God. The rest of all of you is God. So, of course, you know God on one level, the level of oneness. In the world of duality, if we focus too much on the duality, we forget our connection sometimes. But... For someone who feels they don't know God and wants to get back to that seeing, the eyes that see and the heart that feels and the one that knows the divine, the best way that I know to get back to the divine is to fall in love with the divine, the easiest route. It means that when I say fall, I imply fall is, is slip into sink. It's not a trying. You cannot try to be who you already are because then you can't be who you are. You're busy trying. So it'll never come to you if you, the realization of the divine will never come to you if you're striving for it or trying for it or looking for it outside other than with awakened eyes that see it everywhere, everywhere present. So again, the question, maybe my reluctance to let go and let God, as the saying goes, has to do with the fact that I really don't know God. Can you speak to that? Have to really notice which mind you're valuing. If you think you don't know God, then you think the knowing mind is the cogitating mind, the intellect. Don't try to know God with this mind. That's not knowledge. That's thinking. To know God, you want to slip back into an experience of opening your heart to recognize, to feel here the voice for God first. That requires a sometimes deep meditation. It requires taking your eyes that, in quotes, see off the world and start to look inside. You're now going to where the source is. And when you close your eyes, you allow yourself to go deeply into this heart space that contains the divine, contains if we could contain the divine into a form that just so happens to be you. And then the more you relax and surrender to your heart, the more you defer to your heart, Sometimes it's even challenging just to do that within ourselves. When you start to get really good at being able to defer to your heart within this space, you know, where no one else is viewing it, no one else's opinion matters. That's the first step. Then when you get out into the world and you're in relationship with other people, it just becomes more natural. It'll look like in the practical world of form, it'll look like, someone can come right up to you and, and, and do something that normally would make anyone angry or anyone, um, uh, you know, react. And instead, you're leaving space, space for the divine. You're thinking in alignment with the divine. So you're, you're looking at the person as a divine being. <laughs> And you're wondering, more than reacting, you're wondering what the response is that feels the most loving and connected and in sync. And so it looks unusual to some people because it could look like you're, you're kind of stupid <laughs> because you're not a reactive person or you choose what appears to look like sometimes the high road 
which is non-confrontational because it has to be win-win in your world. And so you're not going to take on every fight. And what it looks like is that you're, um, I can't say reasonable because it's not using this, but you're, you're taking a stance where everyone has to win in order for you to engage it. And if it looks, if it truly looks like someone needs to be right to be happy and all they want to be is happy, then you're going to leave it alone because you recognize that's not your forum to play it. So on, in the world of form, when you let go and let God, chances are it looks like you're engaged more fully in what matters. And since most people in the world are not really clear on what matters, you become more discerning and it might look interesting, to put it mildly, to some people, that you're choosing this way when the majority is going that way. Or you're, you're choosing thoughts and feelings that align you with something that brings ultimately more to everyone. But in the process, they think you're giving up something. You're giving up a position or you're giving up a, an opinion or a judgment. What it feels like to you is, I'll bypass all that to stay in oneness. All I have to do is nothing to stay in oneness. If I react to the outside world in any way, I kind of have to leave and do that whole story and mess things around, put them one something over here in the illusion to over here in the illusion. It takes a lot of time and space. Instead, I'll stay focused on what feels and is eternal no, and, and has no linear time and space to it, it's just peace. And that might sound really obscure until you're starting to embody it. And when you are, you know it. Because this idea of letting go and letting God, and the reason you wouldn't do it is because you don't really know God. It's because it's like saying, I'm not going to let go to playing the piano because I don't really know the piano, but you never showed up and you never practiced. You never tried to cultivate an experience of being someone who could play the piano. We all have this, but since the world, again, is very captivating, we have to practice, in quotes, doing nothing. We have to practice allowing ourselves not to be reactive. We have to practice being who we really are, because again, as the Course in Miracles said in the very beginning, we were conditioned to be something that we don't even like, yet we fight to defend it. So one of the lessons later on or passages later on would say, in your defenselessness, your safety lies. What are we defending anyway? Positions that most of us don't even like. We don't really like being human as opposed to divine. And yet we fight for our rights as humans all the time. So that's not saying to be a pacifist in a way that's, you know, complacent and not engaged in life. That's not what this means. It means that you show up with the idea of the solution in mind without fighting a fight, the good fight, just for the reason, just for fighting a fight's sake. You only would engage things that you can clearly see that the end product of that brings peace to everyone.